हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सी एस एन आई टी टूटोरियल बाय वृशाली इन अवर प्रीवियस सम सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट ऑल शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिदम्स विथ सॉल्व एग्जाम्पल्स आई हैव अटैच अ कंप्लीट ओ एस प्ले लिस्ट लिंक इन बिलो डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स नाउ इन टूडे सेशन वी विल डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक दैट इज राउंड रॉबिन शेड्यूलिंग अल्गोरिदम लेट स्टार्ट द सेशन so previously we have already discussed all the subject with super easy explanation practical demonstration and important question bank please share my channel with your friends and subscribe it so we will cover all this topic with some important question bank this question bank will be helpful for your university examination so let's start so as we discussed earlier operating system has multiple scheduling algorithm so previously we have discussed fcfs then sjf shortest job first and srtf that is shortest remaining time first which is also called as sjf preemptive algorithm we have discussed all the scheduling algorithm with solve examples for your exam point of view this all examples are important so today uh, from the scheduling algorithm we will discuss round robin so let's see what exactly round robin So firstly I am giving you a quick information about round robin scheduling algorithm see it is one of the most simplest and most widely used scheduling technique because it is based on the time quantum time quantum means operating system gives a fixed time slot to the particular process for the execution round robin scheduling algorithm generally used in time sharing system or in real time data here in this algorithm every process gets an equal share of cpu time that's why which is also called as preemptive scheduling algorithm so this concept generally used in different operating system networking multitasking environment different embedded system and cloud computing platform the particular platform which handle real time data at that time round robin scheduling algorithm have used before solving example you must know about some basic terminologies we have already discussed all these terminologies in previous session let's take a quick revision of it see here this is a process state transition diagram first in new state your process have created and it goes to the ready state for execution here they are waiting for the cpu allocation now the first one is a arrival time when process arrive in ready queue for execution which is called as arrival time of particular process burst time means actual time required for the execution completion time when your process complete their execution and goes to terminated state which is called as completion time of particular process next one turn around time means total time arrival to completion which is called as turn around time and the formula is completion time minus arrival time next one is waiting time due to some interruption your process goes to the waiting state which is called as waiting time of particular process and the formula is turn around time minus burst time next one is response time when cpu is allocated to the particular process first time which is called as response time of particular process and last one is a gan chart gan chart is visualization chart they display each and every details of particular process in diagrammatical manner so all these terminologies will be helpful for solving the example so let's solve the example so this kind of example have asked in your university exam as well as gate exam so prepare accordingly now the first step is you need to analyze which data is given and which data you need to find out see here in this particular table first process numbers are given like p1 p2 p3 and p4 there are total four process arrival time is there like p1 is arrive at 0 p2 is arrive at 1 p3 is arrive at 2 and p4 is arrive at 4 let's assume that 2 means 2 o'clock 4 means 4 o'clock in this way it is easy to understand next burst time is given that is total execution time is required for particular process so p1 required 5 unit of time for execution p2 required 4 unit of time p3 required 2 unit of time 
and again P4 required one unit of time for execution. Now this is a round robin scheduling algorithm. So time quantum is given. Time quantum is two. Means every process executed two unit of time at a time, right? So this data is given. Now you need to find out completion time, turn around time, waiting time, response time, then average turn around time and average waiting time. So this kind of questions will ask for eight to nine marks in your exam. So let's see. First step is you need to draw the Gantt chart, and second step is you need to mention one Q here. Q represent the waiting state of particular process, and Gantt chart represent the your CPU execute a particular process. That is execution of particular process. Clear? Now Gantt chart and Q always start with the zero. Now check that at zero unit of time, which process has come here? See, at zero unit of time, P1 is there, right? So move P1 in particular Q. Now P1 process is goes to waiting state. They are waiting for CPU allocation time. So there is only one process in Q. So CPU execute that particular process, right? Now check what is the burst time of P1? Burst time is five unit of time. But what is the time quantum? Two unit of time. These are the fixed time slot for execution. So CPU executed P1 process for two unit of time, zero to two. So from five, two unit of time have executed. What is the remaining time? Three unit of time. Clear? Means P1 process have executed partially here. Now again check at two o'clock. Or between zero to two, which process has come? So at two o'clock, P3 is there, right? And between zero to two, P2 process is there. Their arrival time is one, and P1 arrival time is zero. So P1 already in queue, right? So mention P3 and P2 process as per their arrival time. So first at one o'clock, P2 is there, and at two o'clock, P3 is there, right? So there are total two process now are in waiting for the CPU. Now first check that your P1 process executed completely. No, they have executed partially. So mention P1 at the last. So this is a round robin. They have executed in circular fashion. Clear? Now check. In Q first there is a P2 process. So CPU executed P2 process first. What is the burst time of P2? Four unit of time. So from four unit of time, CPU executed a particular process two unit of time. So two plus two equal to four. So what is the remaining time? Two unit of time is remaining. Clear? Now check. At four o'clock or between zero to four, which process has come? So at four o'clock, P four is there, right? And between zero to four, P one, P two. P3 is there, so P1, P2, P3 are already in queue, right? So just mention P4 here in particular queue, right? Now check that your P2 process have executed completely or partially, partially, right? Two unit of time is remaining, so just mention P2 at the last in particular queue, right? Now check P1 executed partially, P2 executed partially here. Now next one, which one is? P3 in particular Q, right? So CPU executed P3 process here. Now check what is the burst time? Two unit. And what is our time quantum? Again two unit, right? So CPU executed a particular process two unit. Four plus two equal to six. Means CPU com complete the execution of P3 process. Clear? Means your P3 process executed completely. Now Next, check at six o'clock or between zero to six, which process has come? So at six o'clock there is no any other process, right? So between zero to six, P1, P2, and P4 is there. P3 they complete their execution. So there are total three processes as remaining. Now check in particular state, which one is there first? P1 is there, right? So CPU executed P1 process. What is the remaining time of CPU? Three unit of time. So from three unit of time, 
CPU executed P1 process 2 unit. So 6 plus 2 equal to 8. What is the remaining time? 1 unit of time is remaining. Now again check uh, after P1 which process is there in Q? P4 process. Right? So check that P1 executed completely? No. So mention P1 at the last. Clear? So after P1 which process in Q? P4. So CPU executed P4 process. What is the burst time of P4? 1 unit of time. Right? So CPU executed completely because our time quantum is 2 unit. So less than 2 is allowed. Right? So CPU executed at 1 unit of time. 8 plus 1 equal to 9. Clear? Means CPU executed P4 process completely. Now which one is remaining? P2 and P1. Right? CPU executed P4 completely here. So P2 and P1. So after that CPU executed P2 process here. So CPU executed P2. What is the remaining burst time? 2 unit of time. So CPU executed completely. 9 plus 2 equal to 11. So CPU complete the execution of P2 process. Clear? Now P2 executed completely. Which one is remaining? P1 is remaining, right? So, this remaining process, CPU is allocated to that particular process and executed here. So, what is the remaining time of P1? 1 unit of time. So, 11 plus 1 equal to 12. Means, CPU complete the execution of P1 process. And all the process have executed as per their burst time, right? So, this is the concept of round-robin scheduling algorithm. Every process gets the fixed time slot. So, CPU share their timing to each and every process equally. Clear? Now, as per the Gantt chart, you need to find out all these values. See, first find out the completion time of P1. What is the completion time of P1? 12 here, right? So, just mention here 12. Clear? Now, what is the completion time of P2? P2 completion time is 11. Then P3 completion time is 6 here. Then P4 completion time is 9. Right? So this right side indicate the completion time. And left side indicate the arrival time. Clear? Now find out the turnaround time. And the formula is completion time minus arrival time. So what is the turnaround time of P1? Completion time is 12. Arrival time is 0. So their turnaround time is 12. Now for P2, 11 minus 1, that is 10. For P3, 6 minus 2 equal to 4. And for P4, 9 minus 4 equal to 5. So this is a turnaround time of particular process. Next one is a waiting time. And the formula is turnaround time minus burst time. So turnaround time is 12 and burst time is 5. Take a, a original one, right? So 12 minus 5 equal to 7. Again, waiting time of P2 process, 10 minus 4, that is 6. P3 process, 4 minus 2, that is 2. And for P4 process, waiting time is 5 minus 1, that is 4. Clear? Next one is the response time. So, the formula of response time is arrival time minus start time. See, P1 process, their arrival time is 0. And what is their start time? 0. So, 0 minus 0. 0. Again, check what is their P2 process, their response time. Arrival time is 1 and their uh, starting time is 2. So, 2 minus 1, 1. Clear? Again, P3 process, arrival time is 2 and starting time 4. So, 4 minus 2, 2 here. Right? Next one is P4 process. What is the arrival time of P4 process? Uh, arrival time 4. And start time 8 here. Right? So, 8 minus 4, 4. So, this is the response time. Now, to find out the average turnaround time. And the formula is total of turnaround time divided by total number of process. So, make the addition of this turnaround time. That 12 plus 10 plus 4 plus 5. That is 31. And divided by total process 4. So, the average turnaround time is 27.25. Next, average waiting time. Same formula is there. Total waiting time 
divided by total number of process to make the addition of all these things that is 7 plus 6 plus 2 plus 4 equal to 19 and divided by total number of process 4 so average waiting time is 4.75 now in round robin scheduling algorithm there is a one more concept that is context switching c cpu is allocated to each and every process as per the time slot right so how many context switching are there c cpu is allocated to the p1 for two unit of time after that cpu is allocated to the p2 right so this is called as context switching clear that is preemptive scheduling algorithm so one two three four five and six so there are total six context switching means for six times your cpu is switches to one process to another process this is called as context switching in round robin scheduling algorithm so this is all about uh, round robin scheduling algorithm you must prepare for your exam exam point of view right now as per your previous year question paper they have asked this kind of question mostly or repeatedly see this kind of question have given like consider this set of process there are total five process you need to find out arrival uh, arrival time and burst time is given right and you need to find out average turnaround time average waiting time and you need to solve this example by using SJF preemptive that we have already discussed in our previous session and round robin scheduling algorithm and time quantum is given that is two unit of time and also you need to draw the GAN chart so this kind of question generally asked for eight marks so same type of question same example have repeated almost two to three times in previous year question papers so prepare accordingly so this is all about round robin scheduling algorithm stay tuned for my next topic and please subscribe it and also share it with your friends thank you